everybody, I'm Jeremy Siskin. I am here with Leah Booth for, I guess, the third in our yes. 25 part installment. <laughs> uh, 25 part series. No, uh, I don't know how many part series, but uh, this is now we're talking about piano and voice for in time ballads. We did an episode on rubato ballads, but now we're going to uh, play in time. And just to remind you, Leah has a new album out, which is called. Life can be beautiful. There it is. Yes. Yes. And so it's available everywhere. Make oh, sure to check everywhere. it out. Assuming that you enjoy Leah's singing, which I'm sure you will. <laughs> um, my fingers. All right. So there's so many different ways to play an in-time ballad. But as a pianist, probably my first thing that I'm thinking about is pulse. Um, if we are playing in time, then I want to make sure that there is a sense of pulse. And I've talked about this before in terms of just piano ballads. but to me, we have to really be clear on whether we're playing a straight eighth ballad or a swung ballad. Um, and so let's start with some straight eighth ballads. And when I am trying to define the pulse on a straight eighth ballad, usually I, I'm gonna be repeating a note. Um, and really softly, it's simulating the brushes on the snare drum so that we both know where that quarter note is and so that the audience has a sense of where it is. So uh, we're gonna play the song, uh, The Very Thought of You. I'm getting that right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and so the pulse is mostly gonna be in this left hand thumb here. And we just wanna really warm up this sound so that she can get in there and be as creative and expressive um, as she wants to be. So let's try, maybe we'll just do the first half or so of, of the very thought of you. Um, and I'm going to be demonstrating using just a really soft quarter note pulse in my left hand thumb. stop <laughs> the mere idea of you <laughs> that longing here for you <laughs> um cool so what were your thoughts on that leah how did that make you feel warm and fuzzy good yeah but <laughs> in the uh which one did we do before this the the rubato ballads video mm -hmm. um we talked about when you're when you're padding and continuing the chord through the space holding it out makes you feel like you're in a warm bath that's mm -hmm. how I felt with this. Cool. Really yeah, that's cozy and comfy. That's exactly what I'm going for yeah. as a pianist. And so much of this, guys, is about your touch on the instrument. You know, I could play those exact same notes with a different touch, and it would be a disaster. <laughs> um, right. Let's demonstrate a disaster here. Okay. So I'm going to play the exact same thing. <laughs> maybe yeah, maybe not. That's how I get fired. That's how um, I, I don't get the gig, right? So singers don't want to scream. Well, yeah, some of them do. I don't like screaming. <laughs> true. Some of I the, like some to of be them, quiet so. and intimate. 
Yeah, well, in a tune like this, the very thought of you, it's like about this thing that you're holding close to your heart, right? Um, Cool, yeah, so, I mean, part of it is dynamic, but part of it is, you know, if, if there's a drop every two beats when you're playing the chord, that's a problem. So you wanna really move horizontally as much as you can into these chords so that it's, um, you know, you're able to get that soft, intimate, smooth movement from chord to chord. Um, another way to approach this is the piece piece pattern in the left hand. And um, for those of you who have watched my YouTube channel a long time, you know I'm somewhat obsessed actually with a version of this song um, by Hank Jones that uses the piece piece pattern. So the piece piece pattern is bass, chord, chord, bass, bass. And this works really well for a straight eighth approach as well. And when you do this, my right hand is freed up. So I can be more responsive, I can fill out the sound in the upper register and just make some of these chords a little bit richer if I want. Um, do some fills, do some responses. Here, because of the nature of this song, I'm probably not going to get too playful or busy. Although, I guess we'll see. Can we try a version like that? Absolutely. So nice. That immediately put me into daydream land. Nice. Oh, I love that. Cool. And you guys might have noticed that even though we're calling this an in-time ballad, there were some moments where we paused or stretched. Yeah. And that's totally allowed, especially in a duo setting. Like, this is one of the reasons that you play duo, is so that when the mood moves you, and it's usually going to be right at the end of a section, you can decide to pause, to retard, and then put a fermata there. And as long as both partners are sympathetic, listening, paying attention to that underlying emotional current of what's happening, yeah. um, then you can make those kinds of split second decisions. So just getting back to the technical side of things here, a couple of things that you heard. Um, so I was doing that piece piece pattern. Right. And in, in between her melodic phrases, because there's so much space in this tune, right? Um, I was kind of echoing more or less those phrases, and I was using octaves, but doing a little bit of a, a plingy uh, roll on those octaves, which um, okay. reminds me of Hank Jones, and I don't know, there's just something intimate and bell-like about that, that that just kind of moves me in this, uh, in this sense. Um, but then, as we got to different parts of the form, I want to make some changes. Um, if you just do that piece-piece pattern, it's gonna be lovely, but you know, you're not giving as much variety to your vocalist so that they can just sing the song as they need. That This is the part at which they're gonna push a little bit harder because it's gonna be all about them. But making some subtle differences is gonna help. So for example, um, after that first section, I, and by the way, this is stolen directly from, from Hank Jones, but I did this kind of uh, syncopated bass chord, bass chord, bass chord, bass chord, and then back 
back to the piece piece pattern and then as we got to the, uh, bar nine which kind of is the bigger section instead of doing bass chord chord bass I did bass chord 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 bass chord 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 subtle difference did you even notice that Leah I felt it yeah I heard yeah. it yeah mm -hmm. um, but probably as you guys were listening through unless you are really like zeroing in on what I'm trying to do it's not gonna like register as like whoa something huge changed right. it's just a slight change in feel yeah. that signals that there's a different section yeah. going on um, I think what we should do now is go to more um, of a in time swung ballad okay and here, my first go-to is playing stride piano. Um, and it is possible to play stride in a straight eighth feeling, but to me, stride always wants to swing a little bit. Um, so actually, I'm gonna double back just for a second. Let's, let's do stride, but in a straight eighth feeling first, and okay. then we'll swing it. Hopefully, I won't mess this up. <laughs> Sorry, sorry to interrupt you mid -flow. My eyes were closed. Yeah. <laughs> now let's do stride, but we'll swing it. And it's, it'll be a gentle swing, right? When we talk about swing for a ballad, we're not talking about like really digging in and hitting hard accents, but we're getting into kind of, I, I, the word loping always occurs to me. Do I know what the word loping means? Not exactly. Do you, do you ride horses? Uh, I do not. Do horses <laughs> lope? Yeah. Oh, okay. They do. Okay. They do, don't they? I don't know. I've heard um, this before. <laughs> somebody settle that in the comments. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's kind of just this sway. Yeah. So, you know, here we're going to be thinking more in terms of triplets. I might start to leave a little bit of space, a little bit of silence in here um, as we start swinging. That, that I think helps with the articulation. So let's try it. So here's that first section as now a swung ballad, and I'll still be playing stride piano. If you were on a gig mm -hmm. and you were like, okay, we're doing the very thought of you as a ballad. Yeah. Would you expect it? Would it be weird if we came back and we did that? Would you think of this as a slow swing rather than a ballad? Or do you feel like... For me, no, because I like to do things all sorts of ways. Yeah. So I I like to tell my musicians, especially my chordal players, um, play it how you want to play it. I'll give you a, a tempo. Mm -hmm. And if you have a certain feel that you like... I'm totally open to that. I, I like the creativity and the conversation that comes from that. Right. And usually one can tell from a count off whether you yeah. want to play straight or swung. Right. Right. Usually if I'm feeling it a little more peppy, then I'll, I'll definitely go for that vibe um, of like a stridey swing ballad. Right. Yeah. So just uh, in case you don't know what I mean, if I were counting this off as a straight ballad, I would snap on all four. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. 
And if I want to count it off as a swing ballad, I'd probably just snap on two and four. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. Same tempo, same thing coming out of my mouth, but the intent feels different. Mm -hmm. um, so these sorts of things are subtle. Another subtle thing that's happening in the piano that you may or may not pay attention to is that the pedaling is different. For a straight ballad, I'm probably pedaling every single quarter note so that there's not any silence. Because um, she described that warm bath, that's what I want to feel on a straight eighth ballad. Right, so there's no silence in there because I'm letting the pedal connect. I'm pedaling every quarter note. For this kind of ballad, I'm going to mix up the pedaling. I might... I might even do this. And so now there's these pockets of silence, mm -hmm. which kind of allow that rhythm to bubble up yeah. a little bit more. Gives it a more playful effect for me. Yeah, and having some short notes is so key to a swing style. If everything's long, it's not going to be a satisfying swing style. So lifting that pedal is going to be really important to creating a sense of swing. All right, I asked you this last time. Are you up for a little experiment? Always. So. Everything that we've done so far has been a quarter note based ballad, but it can be interesting to th think about other ways of defining the time. And so sometimes I like to do an eighth note based ballad where instead of repeating a quarter note, I'm actually going to kind of have running eighth notes going. So I'm not sure how this is going to turn out, if I'm honest, um, but if you're Find willing, let's, let's, let's try it. It's going to probably be more fluid sounding. Hopefully we'll like it. <laughs> <laughs> Was so lovely, Leah. But let's let's just take a second. I'm curious how that eighth note ballad felt to you. Yeah, it made me want to sing longer, longer oh. tones, longer lines. Did yeah. it feel a little bit like a straight jacket? Like the rhythm was so defined that you didn't have no flexibility. No, not at all. Yeah. So just a different, more drive. And I I felt like since you were you were driving, mm -hmm. I wanted to lay back more. 
Oh. And give you that. Um, so I wanted to give, yeah, I wanted to give you more space um, and just really stretch out the line so that you could move underneath it like this. Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks again to Leah Booth. Check out her new album, Life Can Be Beautiful. Um, and stay tuned to the channel. Like, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you all soon.